Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar hosted by Cox and Kings the Americas and Visit Jordan. We will hear from two speakers today, Daniel Weinstein from Cox and Kings the Americas and Samer Abu Taleb, the Americas Director of Partnerships and Consumer Marketing for Visit Jordan. If time allows, we will answer some questions following the webinar. But to start us off, uh, we will have Samer. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for your time. Um, I'm just going to go through a few quick uh, details, some tips about Jordan, um, and hopefully to inspire you to come to this beautiful country. <clears throat> okay. So, we're a small country, but we like to say that it's uh, one of the biggest small countries you'll visit because from top to bottom, it's honestly just a six hour drive, but you pass by so many different landscapes and different people, different foods. You get to learn so much, you know, just visiting for, for a week. So it's really good value for your clients. And yeah, the, the population in the capital city is 2 million and the total population is around 7 million now. So as you can imagine, it's probably smaller than a lot of your uh, states or even cities uh, in the states. So, um, the first uh, point is the airport. We have two international airports. The first one is in Amman, the capital. Uh, it's brand uh, new. It's uh, newly done, renovated a couple of years ago. Really, really nice. Um, and you have the King Hussein International Airport in the south in Aqaba. It's uh, where the Red Sea is. Um, and flights are becoming uh, more and more frequent there uh, to help out um, with the uh, influx of tourism to Jordan. Our main national carrier is Royal Jordanian. They have direct flights from New York, JFK, Detroit, Montreal, and Chicago. Um, and then other ways you can go is through Europe um, or with uh, a Middle Eastern carrier. I prefer, honestly, uh, Europe, but don't tell Royal Jordanian. Um, just giving you guys a little outlook on how far everything is. It's not as far when you talk about from New York to Amman is a direct 10-hour uh, flight. Sometimes people think it's too long, but really not that bad. Um, just some tips before you go. A lot of people ask us, you know, uh, being in the Middle East, uh, you know, the, the, the heat or the, uh, uh, the religious uh, customs and things like that. They ask us about, you know, what do people wear? Uh, honestly, we are a very uh, open society. I think that's why we've been um, very safe and, and welcoming to everybody that we have. Uh, all, you'll feel the warmth really from the people as soon as you arrive there. Um, so your attire really uh, is just what you're used to. The only thing we would say is that uh, maybe in the more traditional spots, if you have uh, some of the uh, tours that are going through um, maybe some of the villages and things like that, just to not, you know, have extremely short shorts on or things like that, just because of the older uh, people over there. It's just more about modesty and, and it's just a tip, uh, just some advice that I would give just for respect purposes. Um, currency, we're hedged to the US dollar, so uh, it's uh, one dollar is 70 cents, uh, seven Jordanian cents. Um, but, you know, a dollar goes uh, a way longer way in, in Jordan. Um, and you can use your credit cards pretty much everywhere, unless it's like a small shop that you found and you find something really nice. Um, there's exchange, money exchange places everywhere, uh, especially at the airport. Uh, when you first arrive, I usually advise to um, go ahead and, and get your uh, dollars exchanged there. Um, for the admin thing, you could get uh, you could get your visa up, upon arrival if you're an American. Um, and multiple uh, multiple entry or single entry, and usually a partner like Cox and Kings would take care of that anyway for you and your groups. Um, the language I'm uh, I'm from Jordan. I grew up there, born and raised. Um, we we speak English. Uh, Arabic is our main language, but we all uh, learn English in schools uh, from first grade. So everybody understands English. Uh, doesn't mean they speak uh, with this accent that I'm using right now. So. Um, but they're very eager to speak and help out, uh, and um, Spanish is the third and fourth language would be French. Um, and there's tour guides from all different kinds of languages uh, speaking as well. Weather, um, 
I'm in Washington DC right now and it's really, really humid. Uh, we don't have humidity, that's one thing. Um, it's very, it's, it's really moderate. It's an all year round kind of destination. It's not uh, like some other countries around us in the South where it gets super, super hot in the summer. The highest it would get would be, you know, around 34 degrees uh, 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 Celsius. So that's probably 110 um, and that's dry heat. And that's in the peak summer year uh, months. Um, so really you start uh, loving trees a lot because as soon as you go under a tree, you're, you feel good. And as soon as the sun goes down, you have that beautiful um, weather, the nice coolness uh, that comes with it. So uh, it really is a, uh, a year round destination in terms of weather. Um, my favorite time is in the spring because you get to really see the colors and the, you know, in the north, the flowers and the waterfalls and the greenery people don't expect to see that when they first come to Jordan where they think it's um, all desert kind of uh, land. So it's uh, really nice and surprising. Um, and I would say our spring it runs from end of February, early March to end of May, early June. And then that's pretty much uh, one of our high seasons. The other high seasons is the fall. So the fall would go probably September to November. It's wonderful as well um, over there. The weather is, is extremely wonderful. Um, very, again, modern kind of society, uh, modern kind of things. You have Uber, Airbnbs, and every, very easy to get around. Um, people really will go out of your, their way. Um, whoever has been to Jordan can attest to that. Uh, people really go out of their way to, to help out. Um, you know, we, we, we look at you as visitors of ours, so um, it's like you're coming to our house. I'm just going to go really quickly through the kinds of people or the experiences that you could have in Jordan. And I'll start off with the culinary travel, just because um, people absolutely love the food in Jordan. It's, uh, it's not spicy, but it's full of spices. Um, and it really caters to all kinds, like vegetarian, vegans, or whatever you are, because it's very much a vegetable-based uh, uh, foods, and then meat is on top of it, um, is, is used as you know the meat, but it's not the base item. Um, so that's very good for, for people that are vegetarian. Um, the main meats that we have is uh, the most famous is our lamb. I guess it would be like maybe uh, pork here. And then you have the chicken and uh, what else is there left? Oh, beef. Uh, those are the three main main ones. Uh, of fish in the south for sure with the beach. Um, and those are the main ones. But really uh, for us, food is different. Uh, you know, you'll be invited a lot or, or you know, uh, if you are invited to dinner, you know, make sure you're, you're there and, and, and hungry because uh, we like to feed our guests a lot and it's really used for, a, you know, kind of a way to show hospitality. It's just built in us uh, from the Bedouin culture. Um, you're going to be offered tea and coffee everywhere and, and you're not going to be asked to pay anything really because it's just that everybody would, is really happy to have people from all over the world coming and they, of course, we get a lot of Americans uh, asking about um, if, if we love Americans or not. And, well, we grew up to your movies and, and shows and things like that. So when you uh, uh, are there, you'll feel definitely that people would love to learn from you and ask you questions and things like that. Um, moving on to something that I'm really, really proud of. We did at the Tourism Board uh, uh, in 2018. We launched the Meaningful Travel Map of Jordan in partnership with Tourism Cares. Um, and Cox and Kings are one of these uh, tour operators that uh, that implemented a few of these uh, destinations. And what it is is Jordan really all only has tourism. That's our main source of of income in the whole country. Um, so uh, tourism has been doing really well, and we are trying to make sure that our economy stays doing well in a sustainable way. And we identified certain uh, uh, community developments, social enterprises. Um, uh, around the de around the destination in the very famous around the very famous site. So you know you're talking about Petra or Jarash or Dead Sea. We have these women-led initiatives. Ten out of the twelve initial ones are women-led initiatives. We've seen how when you provide um, you know the 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 right um, kind of resources and the exposure to these women, they really we've seen it with our eyes. The the, the whole village thrives, and we're really that's our main goal is to just um, have your your guests, your your clients, you to go there and really have a very high touch point, high value kind of tour um, where you're speaking to people, you're learning from them, but you're also giving back to them so much by just being there 
uh, speaking to them, um, they really gain a, a lot of exposure and they learn a lot about uh, from you guys and stuff like that. So it's a really great way um, to to travel uh, or even just spend a day or an afternoon or lunch or a dinner or whatever it may be at one of these places. Um, you could look at it at golocaljordan.com or you could reach out to me and I can send you everything. Um, our traditional uh, our traveler is uh, probably very interested in, in history and archaeology. We like to say it's uh, really an open-air museum. We've had so many different uh, civilizations and, and empires coming through the land. So we have Greco-Roman, uh, we have Gre uh, Greco ancient sites, Roman sites, um, you know, uh, 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 religious sites as well. So um, it, they're littered over, literally over 10,000 archaeological sites uh, uh, are in Jordan. Jarash is one of the most famous um, uh, sites as well after Petra. Um, there's desert castles everywhere. It's it's uh, really wonderful to go through with family and kids as well. So it's a very much a very good family destination. Um, the fastest growing uh, segment would be adventure slash active travel. Um, not hardcore doesn't necessarily mean hardcore adventure, but um, it, it's uh, we're we're really reaching the younger markets right now, and and people are really realizing how much you could do in Jordan and how much you could really. Um, see and, and experience for yourself. I think Jordan Trail really helped boost that as well. We launched uh, the Jordan Trail in 2017 um, and it's already been named the best experience uh, last year by National Geographic, Travel and Leisure, Condé Nast, all of these different uh, big publications. So that actually happened uh, very quick and, and people you know, started wanting to experience it. Um, and Jordan Trail really is, uh, it's, it's like the Camino Santiago in Spain basically goes from the, the north to the south of Jordan, um, and it's a through. You could do a through hike. It's 44 days, um, but it's split up into different sections where you could spend a day on the on the trail. There's a lot of homestays. There's a lot of um, different uh, uh, things that you can do and see. I I would love to go on it, just because I know I'll see different things, even though I've been to Jordan thousands and thousands of times. But um, yeah it would work very well. One little uh, funny story about that. Um, we had a lot of support in developing this uh, trail for uh, five, six years, but then, you know, really the, it was, it was tough work, but the toughest work was to try to convince the people that we were having the homestays at to charge people because they're like, no way, they're coming from the States, India, England, whatever, we'll host them, we'll have them, we'll give them some food for free and, and let them stay over at our house there, I guess. So really that was the hardest way to say like, guys, we need to, we sustainably build this uh, together so um it really goes to show uh the people in jordan you know it's uh it's uh very very you'll feel the warmth of the people immediately and that was just a little bit of an example um people wadi ram is getting really really famous right now with all of these different movies being filmed there um the martian really uh in in the most uh in 2016 helped out a lot and you guys will see um the different campsites that have developed uh, uh, based on that movie, um, as well as uh, Aladdin was uh, filmed there, and which was just out. It was really nice to watch it because there's a lot of hard work going into there, and it's really it's it's you know where Aladdin was is where you will be if you go there. Uh, Star Wars and brand new one is coming out, fully filmed in Jordan. So um, it's a wonderful uh, place. Um, it's a UNESCO World Heritage site. It's the uh, place where Lawrence of Arabia was, and there's a lot of history over there as well. You do four by fours and stuff like that. So I'm sure um, uh, uh, my uh, Cox and Kings will be able to explain to you what kind of activities you'll be doing over there. But there's so much. I mean, it's it's an, it's honestly probably people's highlight um, next to uh, Petra. Honeymoon experiences is definitely going up with a lot of the nice properties that we're uh, having right now. Uh, where we have the St. Regis opening up. Uh, we've had uh, all of these little uh, uh, boutique hotels, um, very nice kind of locations, especially in the Dead Sea. So this is, you could combine it also with a kind of like a wellness trip as well, because it's the lowest point on earth, um, the highest oxygen content in the world, and you float on water. And the, the mud is, is very healing, has these healing properties for your skin. Um, so a lot of people go there, relax, unwind, and, and things like that, um, as well as Aqaba in the south uh, with scuba diving. People didn't know about that and, and world-class scuba divers uh, uh, have been exploring there and really raving about, about it, uh, especially because maybe it's not been used as much. So everything is really, you know, um, 
I guess, untouched in a way, the corals and stuff. I'm not a scuba diver, so I wouldn't know the exact lingo, um, but um, trust me on that one. It's very good. Um, of course, another resilient uh, segment for us is the uh, faith-based travel. Religious travelers want to go see the uh, baptism site of Jesus, a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well in Jordan called Bethany Beyond the Jordan. Um, you have these beautiful uh, churches, uh, the oldest uh, uh, map a holy, of the Holy Land in the world, um, a place in Mount Nebo where Jesus, uh, where uh, Moses saw the promised land. So you get through all these stories, um, walk through the footsteps of these prophets and, and these people um, in the books. And, and it's um, a lot of people. Uh, I think that's our, our oldest uh, segment, probably. As, as I mentioned, a lot of different holy sites in Jordan. Um, and there's just really so much more, a lot of uh, people, solo travelers and, and things like that is, is picking up, but really the most of the people are going in groups. Um, they want to have a, a, a partner like ours, like in Cox and Kings, where they have a tour guide and they have everything set up for you because you just go and enjoy yourself and learn a lot, speak to everybody and um, yeah, just in, enjoy yourself. And this is our uh, website and our social media as well. And uh, hopefully uh, you will contact me and us if you need anything. Thank you. Thank you, Samer. Now we'll hear from Dania. Okay, thank you so much, Samer, for the overview of Jordan. And thanks to everyone today that's joined us. So I just want to start with uh, some information about Cox and Kings. And this is me. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, Cox and Kings. So uh, most of you know that really what we specialize in is private FIT. So you bring us your clients. You let us know who they are, what they're looking for, what kind of style trips they want, and we customize everything for them. We also did design a small selection of luxury small group journeys in that same style, sort of taking what we do for FIT, but turning it into group departures. So that is an option for you now as well to a select number of destinations. We have a history of over 260 years. We began in 1758. I know it's pretty impressive. And what we love about us, what we think makes us really special is that you get to work with one specialist from the moment you call that very first time through to after your clients have traveled and we're wrapping everything up at the end of their trip. So it's really personal and specific to you. Um, we have obviously 24 seven customer care while your clients are traveling. So really the care is always there. It feels very full service. We're, we're very full, fully aware of your clients travel needs and we're always gonna be there for them and for you. So meet our team, we're lovely. We're happy to talk to you anytime, call us. We're happy to chat. And let's get into Jordan. So we have two itineraries published on our website. The first is called Hidden Treasures of Jordan. It, this is our most popular Jordan trip. It covers Amman, goes down to Petra, then down to the deserts of Wadi Rum, and into Dead Sea. So it kind of covers everything. Um, it's about a seven day journey. And it really, it's an amazing trip. It just covers so much from city to nature to water to history. It gives you a taste of everything. We've recently added a Jordan adventure, which is an amazing itinerary. It's a little bit more extensive. I believe it's nine days. And it does include the Dana Biosphere, which is the largest nature reserve in Jordan. And then for all of you to know, this is really exciting and it's in partnership with Visit Jordan. So, uh, if you book a trip anytime, well, starting June 1st, which has passed through to March 31st, 2020, of a four night minimum in Jordan, you will be receiving a $100 gift card and you'll be entered to win a trip to Jordan for yourself, which is amazing. It's a seven day trip. It's pretty extensive. So get booking to Jordan and your chances of winning are, you know, pretty good and you can explore this amazing destination for yourself, which is amazing. Okay, I just wanted to run through some of our favorite hotels and experiences really quickly here. Um, in Amman, there's actually a number of really great hotel options. We're lucky more hotels are opening because tourism is booming in Jordan right now. It's a hot destination. 
Um, probably our most go-to property is the Four Seasons still, just because the service we really feel is unparalleled and it's a gorgeous property. One thing to note is that it is under construction, part of the hotel until the end of the year. So just something to keep in mind for your clients. But one of our favorite properties, we also love the Grand Hyatt, the W, there's an Intercontinental, there's a Fairmont. So there's lots of good options for different price ranges. When we go down to Petra, our tried and true is always going to be the Mopentech. It is a two minute walk from the visitor center, which is pretty much at the entrance of the Steak, so it doesn't get any closer for actually getting to Petra. There's also a really fun option for your more adventurous clients, the Bubble Hotel. It's further from Petra, about three miles, so we would drive, but it is Obviously, from this photo, you can see it's just a whole different experience. And each of those rooms has their own hot tub. So, I mean, I just want to be there right now. It's so beautiful. <laughs> you get to stargaze from your bed. Going down to Wadi Rum, there's actually a similar concept at the Sun City Camp there. These rooms that you can see are called their Martian domes. Um, I would say if you're visiting Petra and Wadi Rum, you don't have to do the bubble, rum, bubble room in both. You could do the Mobin Pick in Petra and then do this down in Wadi Rum. But again, just that experience of lying back in your bed and being able to see the stars is pretty unique. For people visiting the Dead Sea, we really love the Kempinski the best. It's just gorgeous. The food is amazing. It has a private stretch of beach. It just, it's a home run every time. And then onward to experiences. So uh, Samer touched on culinary experiences, but we find that Petra Kitchen tends to be a really great, fun thing for your clients to do. It's a cooking class and then dinner as well. So that could be one night after they go explore Petra that day. Petra by night, it's offered Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, 8 o'clock p.m. You walk through the seat, you get to Petra, it's lit up by candlelight. I mean, it's pretty Wadi Rum, you can explore by Jeep. It's kind of like off-roading, bumping around, super fun. You can explore by a camel. You're taken by a Bedouin guide who tells you about this area. And then as Summer said, the Martian was shot there and you can only imagine, I mean, it literally looks like you're on Mars. It's pretty crazy looking there. So um, that's, I really would encourage any clients who are adventurous and looking for something nature-based to get down there. Bethany, I mean, again, yeah, Samer touched on how there's space-based experiences here, but I do find some agents are excited to know that Bethany Beyond Jordan is here, which is said to be the baptismal site of Jesus. And so I find a lot of our Christian clients are excited to incorporate this into their trip. And this is about half an hour away from some of the hotels in the Dead Sea. Scuba diving in Aqaba, um, again, yeah, clear water, great corals, beautiful beach, and this is just a really awesome way to get into the Red Sea and see amazing marine life. But it's really easily accessible. It's just uh, about an hour or an hour and a half away from, Pet from Petra. So it's, it, it can all just be done in a really quick circuit. I mean, as Samer said, the country's not huge, so you can do so much, and it's all just driving distance apart, making it really easy to connect. And then Jarash as well, I know, again, so the architectural elements, the history, I mean, it's, it's incredible. This is a Roman, ancient Roman city, just a little bit north of Amman. So for a trip to Jordan, where there is a little bit of extra time to spend some time in Amman, get out of the city, go to Jarash, it's not far away. And it's just one of the, uh, one of the 10 Decapolis cities remaining. So a big thank you from Cox and King from Visit Jordan. Again, here's our contact information. Let us know if you want to chat. We want to talk to you. Thank you, Danny and Samer. Uh, we're going to answer a few questions now. Um, so the first question we have is for Danya. Um, how does Cox and King arrange hiking trips? So Cox and King listens to your client's needs. And whether it's hiking and you want to be super active and you want to be out of the car as much as possible, 
that we can make that happen. We can do, there's tons of nature-based things. We would probably take you to the Dana Biosphere. You can do the hike from Little Tetra to Petra. You can do lots of walking activities down in Wadi Rum. We can do the whole thing out of a vehicle if that's what your clients want. So just the more we know about what your clients are looking for, the better we can tailor it to them. Thanks. Um, the next question is for Samer. So with the recent release of Aladdin, which was filmed in Jordan, has have you seen a tourism boost since the movie came out? We've seen really a tourism booth, uh, boost uh, this past couple of years, like a big boost. Um, so I don't know if it would be from Aladdin, but I think the more the people get exposed and edu uh, educated about what Jordan is and its location and things like that, it doesn't hurt. So yeah, I'm sure uh, we've got, because we've got a lot of love from uh, from the crew that was speaking a lot of, uh, very highly about the destination and things like that. So yeah, I think um, we will benefit from, from, from that as well. Thanks. And Daniel, we have an agent who is looking at Petra at night. Could you give some information as to what days of the week that uh, can be done? Yep, definitely Petra by night. It's available on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Um, I'd say it's a really easy thing to tack on, especially, again, if you're staying at the Bowman Pick and it's just so close and doesn't even require getting into a vehicle. So I think it's a really nice add-on. It just, of course, again, depends on your client. And one thing to keep in mind is, like, for a client that might have mobility restrictions, it is dark, it is uneven ground. So that kind of thing we would take into consideration. But overall, it's a really magical experience and quite easy to incorporate for those three days of the week. And Samer, we have an agent who's interested in learning a little bit more about the honeymoon travel that you had mentioned. Uh, specifically, are there any additional um, beaches and resorts that you might recommend besides the Kempinski that Daniel focused on? Yeah, the the in the Dead Sea is where all the uh, resorts are. The um, so you have the brand new Hilton. It's a more a smaller boutique kind of resort. It's really really nice. There's a, a Marriott, Move and Pick, uh, Crown, uh, uh, Crown Plaza, the uh, and the uh, Kempinski. Those are the top ones. Um, and then in Aqaba, it's a it's a beach town basically, and there is amazing properties all over that uh, area. Um, so th it's very easy to find all of the different luxury uh, spots that are uh, over there. Um, and then, um, yeah, just uh, world-class restaurants, uh, amazing services, uh, and I know for sure that you, as, 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 as they were mentioning, you, you, you just have to let them know that this is what your client wants, and really it's a very uh, easy to customize destination. You could bring a, a grand piano to the desert and have a, a candlelight dinner by you and your, your, your significant other, um, you know, a hot air balloon ride. These kinds of things are very easy uh, and customizable in Jordan. So um, th that's what we're seeing being picked up a lot right now in Jordan. Great. Um, and Daniel, we have an agent who has clients that are interested in doing a self-drive. How would you recommend that their clients get around to that? Self-drive is interesting. And for the right client, I know it might be right for them. Cox and Kings doesn't really encourage it, mostly because we really think uh, the experience of traveling through a new country is maximized when you have the expertise of a local guide. Not only can driving be a bit scary in a place that is unknown, you don't know the roads, the signs are in a different language, but of course you're just passing by all these things that you don't really get to take in. You won't even know what you're looking at. So uh, yeah, we just strongly encourage uh, incorporating a private guide for, the, for any kind of journey really. And our last question for today is for Samer. Do you have any tips for solo female travelers going to Jordan? Yeah, there's there's a bunch of content written by a lot of uh, our female uh, travelers that have been there uh, that that you could find on our website. Um, and uh, in 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 reality, it's it's very easy. It's surprisingly easy. This is from what I've heard from all of them. Um, you're very well protected because, first of all, especially if you're alone, you have people um, making sure that you're okay, really, from even without you even noticing. So, um, you know, the the woman, the mom, is the most important figure uh, for us. Uh, we're brought up that way, and you know, we will make sure to go out of our way uh, 
for for help for for you know assistance anything that's needed so it's very easy to get uh, get around and as i mentioned just the modesty in in clothes especially when going to um to the more local uh communities that would be my only advice uh really but otherwise just free uh, free to go and, and, and enjoy well thank you both so much today this is a wonderful webinar and for anyone who has questions, please feel free to reach out to Dania or to Samer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.